this lesson, I'm going to show you how to solve equations that involve algebraic fractions, and specifically equations where you're expected to add or subtract algebraic fractions somewhere in your working out, okay? If you're not familiar with adding and subtracting just ordinary fractions, I do have another lesson on that, also algebraic fractions, in case you want to check that out first, if you think this question looks a little bit difficult, okay? So just like when you're adding and subtracting ordinary fractions, you need to find a common denominator before you add them together, okay? So when we're dealing with algebraic fractions like this, what you need to do to find the common denominator is multiply these two denominators together, okay? So the common denominator would be x minus 2 multiplied by x plus 1, okay? So now we would have a common denominator so we would be able to add the fractions, okay? So you can't just change the fraction and just add x plus 1 underneath without this fraction changing. What you need to do is multiply not only the bottom of this fraction by x plus 1, but also the top of the fraction, okay? So it would become 2 multiplied by x plus 1. So what you're doing, in fact, is just multiplying that first fraction by 1. Okay, because x plus 1 divided by x plus 1 is just 1. So we're just multiplying this fraction by 1. So it hasn't actually changed. It's the same fraction. We're just rewriting it in a different way so that later we can add these two fractions together. Okay, so on the second fraction, remember we've multiplied this by x minus 2. So we have to do the same with the numerator. We have to multiply that by x minus 2 as well. Okay, so we're just adding the x minus 2 on the numerator, but also on the denominator. So we're just timesing this fraction by 1 again, written in the form x minus 2 divided by x minus 2, okay? So it hasn't changed, it's an equivalent fraction. And it's still equal to 3, okay? That's the equation that we need to solve. So now that we've got the common denominators, we can add the fractions together. And as I add them together, I'm going to try and do a bit of simplifying on the numerators, okay? I'm going to expand those brackets. So two multiplied by x is two x, and two multiplied by one is two. And over here, we have positive four multiplied by x, which is positive four x. And positive four multiplied by negative two is negative eight. And the denominator, I'm just going to leave in its brackets, okay? Now, we can simplify, or remember it's still equal to 3, it's good to keep it in its equation form, okay, so we see simply what we're doing as we go along. Now we can simplify the numerator, okay, you've got 2x terms here, 2x plus 4x is 6x, and if we look at the numbers, positive 2 take away 8 is just negative 6, and the denominator I'm going to leave as it is again, moment. Okay, so this is what our equation is now looking like. Okay, so we've done all our simplifying. Now we need to try and get rid of this fraction on the left-hand side. And to get rid of the fraction, what you need to do is multiply both sides of your equation by that denominator, okay? So when you multiply the left-hand side by this denominator, this just cancels, and you're left with the numerator, 6x minus 6. And on the right-hand side, if we multiply 3 by that denominator, it would just look like this. Okay, remember, when you see brackets, it means you're multiplying everything together. Okay, now, we've got brackets over here, so we need to expand these double brackets and simplify. Okay, so we just keep expanding and simplifying until we can't simplify any further. So 3x multiplied by x is 3x, and 3 multiplied by negative 2 is negative 6. I'm going to leave that in brackets because I still have to multiply all of that with the final bracket here, x plus 1. Okay, so the left-hand side just stays as it is for the moment, and I'm still expanding these brackets, okay? So if I expand these double brackets, 3x multiplied by x is 3x squared. 3x times 1 is 3x. Minus 6 multiplied by 6. Uh, x is negative 6x and negative 6 multiplied by 1 is negative 6 okay so we've expanded the double brackets now we can simplify because there's a, an x term here 
and an x term here. So 3x take away 6x is negative 3x, and the negative 6 just stays the same. We're almost finished, okay? We want to put all the terms on one side of the equation, so the equation equals zero. So I'm just going to move those two terms over to the right-hand side, okay? It doesn't really matter which uh, side you move all the terms, but there are only two terms here. So I'm going to move them over here, it looks easier. And then my x squared term is positive, which is always a bit easier to deal with. So if I move these x terms over and the number to the right, I'm left with nothing. So on the left-hand side of the equation, we have zero. On the right-hand side, we still have all this. 3x squared minus 3x minus 6 hasn't moved. And then when these two move, remember they change sign whenever they move across the equal sign. So this positive 6x changes to a negative, and this negative 6 changes to a positive. Now, one last bit of simplifying to do here. There's only one x squared term, so the 3x squared stays the same. Negative 3x take away another 6x leaves us with negative 9x. And negative 6 plus 6, well that's just 0, okay? They cancel each other out. So now we have to solve this quadratic, okay? And it's quite a nice one. We can factorise the right-hand side of this equation to solve. Can you see the highest common factor in 3 and 9 is 3, okay? The biggest thing you can divide both numbers by is 3. There's also a common letter, x. Okay, x is common to x squared, and it's also a common factor to x. So if I factorise, well, 3x multiplied by x gives me 3x squared, and 3x multiplied by negative 3 gives me negative 9x. So now I can spot the values of x. Okay? Because this expression is equal to 0, it means the two values of x can either be 0, okay, so this one would be 0, and this would be a number, so 0 times a number is 0, or the brackets equal 0. So for the brackets to equal 0, this has to be 3, because 3 minus 3 is 0. So the other value of x would be 3. So we've solved that equation. So in this example, it says x over x plus 1 take away x plus 1 over 3x minus 1 is equal to a quarter. And just like before, you need to find a common denominator before you can subtract these two fractions. So to find the common denominator, you just multiply these two denominators together. So x plus 1 multiplied by 3x minus 1. Okay, so I've just written it down here okay, to save time. So remember, if you're multiplying the denominator by 3x minus 1, you also have to multiply the numerator by 3x minus 1. So it would become x multiplied by 3x minus 1. So you're just adding this denominator on top, but also underneath. Okay, so I've written it here. For the second fraction, we multiply the denominator by x plus 1. Okay, this denominator here. So you have to multiply the numerator by x plus 1 as well. So because the numerator is already x plus 1, we're just multiplying it by x plus 1, so by itself. And I'm leaving that original numerator inside brackets because there's more than one term there. And you need to remember to put it in brackets because you're multiplying all of that, so both terms, by this new x plus 1. And this is equal to a quarter. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to group it together, okay, and I'm going to try and expand some brackets as I do so. So if I expand these single brackets here, I get 3x squared minus x. The denominator is still the same. And when I expand the, uh, the brackets on the second fraction here, on the numerator, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that minus here, and when I expand the brackets, I'm going to write my answers inside some brackets because it's very easy to make a mistake on a question like this when you have a negative sign here, okay? This negative sign is eventually going to change the sign of all of the terms on this numerator. So I don't forget to do that. I'm going to leave the minus here and deal with that later. So x multiplied by x is x squared. X multiplied by 1 is 1x, and 1 multiplied by x is also 1x, so 1x plus 1x is 2x, and 1 multiplied by 1 is just 1. Okay, so remember I said that negative here is going to change all the signs. So since they're all positive terms, they're all going to change to negatives. 
Okay, so the numerator becomes 3x squared minus x minus x squared minus 2x minus 1. Okay, and the equation is still equal to a quarter. Okay, I'm running out of room, so I'm going to carry on up here. Now I'm going to just simplify these terms, okay? 3x squared, take away x squared is 2x squared. Then if I look at the x terms, negative x, take away another 2x is negative 3x. And the negative 1 stays the same. Okay, always good to show all you're working out. So if you make a little mistake somewhere and you get the final answer incorrect, um, you still pick up marks for your working, okay? Now, if you've seen part one of, I've just realised I forgot to write the x in there, oops. Okay, so if you've seen part one of algebraic fractions, okay, solving equations, you'll see I use a method called cross-multiplying, when you have a fraction equal to a fraction. Now, that's just a method to get rid of the fractions, okay? So I'm going to multiply this fraction by this denominator here, and the left-hand fraction by the denominator here, 4. And when I do that cross multiplication, the fractions cancel, okay, so you're not left with any fractions. So if I multiply this numerator by 4, I get 8x squared minus 12x minus 4. And if I multiply this denominator by 1, well, it just stays the same, okay, so I'm just going to write it up here in its brackets. Okay, so for the next step, I'm going to expand those double brackets and simplify. So we've still got the left-hand side as it was. So x multiplied by 3x is 3x squared. x multiplied by 1 is negative x. And 1 multiplied by 3x is 3x. So 3x take away x is 2x. And lastly, 1 multiplied by negative 1 is negative 1. Next, I'm going to move all the terms onto one side of the equation, so the, the equation equals zero. I'm going to move these terms over to the left-hand side, uh, just because it keeps the x squared terms positive, okay? If I move the smaller x squared term, so 3x squared is smaller than 8x squared, but again, it doesn't really matter which side you choose, I just think it's easier to do it that way. So when you move those terms over to the left-hand side, they all change sign. So this positive 3x will change to a negative. So 8x squared take away 3x squared is 5x squared. This 2x will also change to a negative. So negative 12x take away 2x is negative 14x. And the negative 1 will change to a positive. So negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3, and that is all equal to 0. So for this quadratic to solve, you can actually factorise, okay, so you can put this into double brackets. So if you do that, you should get 5x plus 1 in one of the brackets, and then in the other bracket you should have x minus 3. Now, if you can't spot how to factorise that quadratic and put it into brackets, I have another lesson uh, where I show you a method called PATH. Okay? Especially when there's a number in front of the x squared, it can be a little bit difficult uh, to factorise expressions like that. So go and have a look at that if you want help with uh, factorising. So now we have to find the two x values. So this is equal to zero. So either this bracket is equal to zero or this bracket is equal to zero. Well, if this second bracket is equal to zero, x has to be 3, because 3 take away 3 is 0. So that's the first value of x, 3. Okay. The other one, if I put this bracket equal to 0, so 5x plus 1 equals 0, and solve that to find x, well, I'm minusing 1 here in this equation, and then dividing by 5, so the second value of x is negative a fifth. 